While some brewers may choose to forego pasteurization in order to preserve the natural flavors and aromas of the beer, the process remains an important tool for ensuring the safety and quality of the final product. Generally speaking, most beers are safe to drink even without pasteurization. However, products such as low alcohol and non-alcohol beers should almost always be pasteurized. Pasteurization theory was originally developed by Louis Pasteur. He demonstrated that heating young wine up to 60 degrees Celsius for a short period of time was enough to destroy microorganisms without sacrificing the quality of the product. Pasteurization should not be confused with sterilization, which is an absolute heat treatment designed to achieve the inactivation of all microorganisms. Pasteurization is a mild heat treatment and is sufficient to accomplish product stability. Beer ready for packaging will contain some level of microbes. Typical spoilage microorganisms include brewer's yeast, wild yeast and variety of bacteria. No pathogens can survive in beer for any length of time. As a matter of fact, not a lot of microorganisms can survive and grow in beer. This is due to the lack of oxygen, presence of antimicrobial hop compound, presence of ethanol, low levels of residual sugar, and low pH. Therefore, different beers require different levels of pasteurization treatment, which depends on the resistance to heat of the present microorganisms. Pasteurization aims to reduce the number of microorganisms in the beer and to prevent multiplication of microorganisms during storage. The brewing industry typically measures the amount of pasteurization needed using a unit called pasteurization unit. Pasteurization units are employed in rating the effectiveness of pasteurization process for beer. Therefore, one pasteurization unit achieves a certain reduction in the number of microorganisms that occurs in a beer held at 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit for one minute. If we look at the formula for PU, we can see that in order to be able to calculate the PU, we need to know the holding times in minute and holding temperature in degrees Celsius. Next, we're going to conduct a pasteurization experiment where we're going to use our small brewing system practically as a batch pasteurizer. We have an induction range which is going to be used to heat the water so that we can achieve the target pasteurization temperature. We also have a recirculation loop so that the water can be circulated through the system during the heating phase. Also, we're going to be collecting time and temperature data so that we can calculate the level of pasteurization or the number of pasteurizing units. First, we're going to take an empty beer bottle and fill it with cold water from our cold liquor tank so that the temperature of the water inside that bottle matches the temperature of the beer that we're going to pasteurize. That bottle is also going to be fitted with a cork and the digital thermometer, which is going to reach the bottom of the bottle or the cold spot. This is just another quick look at our setup where we can see the recirculation loop, the sparge arm, and also the false bottom inside the vessel. Next, we're going to take a few bottles of beer straight from our cold storage and we're going to place them on top of the false bottom inside our batch pasteurizer. Finally, we're going to add the bottle with the thermometer, but we also have to put the lid on top of the vessel just in case if any of the bottles burst during the pasteurization process because of the high pressure inside the bottles. After filling our batch pasteurizer with cold tap water to the full bottle line, we're going to turn on the heat on the induction range to the maximum value and we're also going to start the water recirculation by turning on the pump. After the temperature inside the beer bottle reaches 50 degrees Celsius, 
we should turn on the timer and start recording the time temperature data. After the beer bottle temperature reaches 60 degrees Celsius, we should reduce the heat on the induction range and maintain the temperature for the next five minutes. After five minutes at 60 degrees Celsius, we're going to turn off the induction range and turn off the recirculation pump. After disconnecting the hose from the pump, we're going to start to drain our batch pasteurizer. Next, we're spraying cold water over the bottles in order to quickly lower the beer temperature. After finishing pasteurization, we can look at our time temperature data and see how we can calculate pasteurization units. After reaching 50 degrees Celsius, we have stayed there for 2.54 minutes. Now if we put this in the formula, we practically have 2.54 minutes times 1.393 to the power of 50 degrees Celsius minus 60 degrees Celsius. That is 2.54 times 1.393 to the power of negative 10. After calculation, we can see that the pasteurizing units at 50 degrees Celsius are 0.092. Time at 51 degrees Celsius was 2.35 minutes. After we use that data, we can calculate that the pasteurizing units at 51 degrees Celsius were practically 0.12. We can also see that in the duration column, we actually have the sum of all the individual times spent at each temperature and the cumulative pasteurization units is practically the sum of the pasteurization units accumulated at each temperature. In this table, we can see the time temperature data as well as the calculated pasteurization units as the temperature was increasing from 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. In this next table, the first thing to notice is that the temperature has actually reached 61 degrees Celsius before it started to drop all the way down to 50 degrees Celsius. Pasteurization units are again calculated and we can see that the overall cumulative pasteurization units during the entire pasteurization are 10.83. Finally, we can use our data to produce a pasteurization graph. Here we have the time on the x-axis, beer temperature on the primary y-axis, and accumulated pasteurization units on the secondary y-axis.